So now let's jump into the meat of why I wanted to run this whole seminar, which is how the curve gets its shape. Okay. So let's put a bunch of this stuff together that we now have uh, understood a bit better and make it into a flow of uh, IB curve. But first, vive la résistance. We're going to talk about resistance for a moment because this is going to be needed for me to show you what I want to show you. So if we have a resistor, symbol for resistor, and using Ohm's law, R equals V over I. That's one of its many forms, right? So if I, double the, if I double the voltage, I have to double the current. If I half the voltage, I have to half the current, right? So, and these lines, like I showed you once before, these lines represent, in a sense, an IV curve for a resistor, right? It's a line. So in this case, for a low resistance, with just a little bit of voltage, I get a lot of current flow. If I increase my voltage a little bit more, I get a lot more current flow, right? That's true of a low resistor. Whereas with a high resistor, if I put in a lot of voltage, I still don't get much current. If I put in even more voltage, I still don't get much current, right? That's a high, that's a curve for a high resistor, right? So I'm gonna use this kind of variable line representing a resistor in this discussion. So now I'm gonna to put together three things that we've been seeing, two things plus one that we're gonna start learning about. So the first perspective is this perspective of the electrostatic field, right? At the PN junction, right? Now I'm gonna combine this idea. This was the idea of the electrostatic field. I have space, I have distance along the bottom here, but vertically now I'm gonna draw on a graph of voltage or energy, right? That's where I'm gonna reintroduce my bands, right? So down here, this is the top of the valence band, and this is the bottom of the conduction band. I don't show the whole band, I just show the top of one, the bottom of the next, right? And here I show my electron that's bound to silicon atoms, and up here there would be electrons that would be free to move in the conduction band, okay? So I'm putting these guys together, right? And we remember that with silicon at room temperature, the band that has to be gapped is 1.1 volts. Okay, now, I'm also going to bring along my equivalent circuit. I talked about it before, and I'm going to use it now to explain the third part, which is the shape of the IV curve. So we're going to generate this shape, but we're going to understand the physics of why it has the shape that it has, which is pretty cool. I don't think most people know about this. Most people can explain IV curves, and they'll say, well, it's like a diode, but they don't go beyond that. So I'm going to step through a number of conditions of resistance. I'm going to start at zero resistance. So what's that? That's like a short circuit, right? That's taking the module and taking the plus and minus wire and hooking them together. And you better not do that with a battery, but you can do it with a solar module because it's current limited. Pretty cool. So let's proceed to look at this. What does this mean? I take my solar cell, expose it to light. Light comes in with enough energy, ionizes that electron, creates a whole electron pair. The electron wanders, and once it gets into that field, it gets pushed by the field, gets separated from its possible hole, gets pushed to the front of the cell, and goes out, and the hole wanders to the back of the cell, right? We've talked about this phenomenon now, right? But now, let's look at the energy levels of where you started and where you ended up. And it turns out that under this case, under this situation of this load, that's what's gonna be important. Remember I said, that the solar cell is a passive device and its output depends on what it's connected to, that's where that idea is gonna come in. And right now, it's connected to nothing. It's got no resistance. So, the electron that got energized rose up in energy and then lost it all. So, in this case, where I've got short circuit current, I've got no voltage gain. So on my IV curve graph that I'm drawing here, I draw it at zero volts. Now, the current is the photo-generated current, right? This photo-generated current, the photons coming in, generating current, flowing out, that's the green line flowing here. So that's the amount. So I'm gonna draw that at this level. That's the level of the photon-generated current. Let's say for a cell, I don't know, maybe eight amps or whatever it might be, okay? So that gives me my first point on my IV curve. That gives me my short circuit current point. Zero volts. I have no net voltage gain from all the work that I did with that light, but I've got some current flow. It's weird to have current flow but no voltage, but that's what we've got. But let's keep going because 
this is the critical part that most people don't know about, okay? And this graph is actually kind of accurate. It's, it's this kind of shape. It's a distribution graph. This is a profile of the electron energies in the conduction band. Remember, this is the bottom of the conduction band, so this is all the conduction band over here. Think of this graph vertically being going up in energy, like we always are, but horizontally being the number of electrons. So there's very few at this low energy level, most of them mid-band, and very few with a lots of energy, which is true, right? There's always only a few that have the highest energies. And in this case, if I draw a line across from the threshold level of this band, let's say there are no electrons with enough energy to be able to actually flow the other way. There's no balls that are bouncing around here with enough energy to roll up the hill. None. So all the current that flows is the photon current. And that's what I show here. I'm going to keep going and you're going to understand why this is important. So now let's introduce a little bit of resistance. Again, I'm changing what the module or the cell is connected to. A little bit of resistance here, okay? So here's my line of little bit of resistance. So what's happening? I'm going to have electrons now be able to flow out of the cell through the resistance. Now remember what resistance means, right? Resistance. <laughs> So the light comes in, knocks the electron loose, it flows through the field, the electron goes to the front, the holes wander to the back. But now what's happened? Because there is some resistance, right? It backs up some of the electrons. That's what resistance is, right? Think of, you know, resistance of people walking down the hallway. They don't all get to go as quickly as they did when it was a short circuit. So there's a bit of building up of electrons here. Light comes in, knocks electrons loose. Not all of them get out. They build up. They gradually leak out. So now, if I was to look at the two energy levels of where I started and where I ended, it turns out that these electrons here, going out of the cell, are coming from an environment where they haven't lost all of their voltage. They're, they're piled together here. They still got you know, energy left in order to leave this region. So there is a bit of a voltage difference now because of this piling up of holes and electrons. And if I, if I show that distance, that difference in E, in voltage, is shown as a voltage value. So that determines the voltage that I'm operating at based on this resistance. So I read up. At this voltage, I intersect my resistance curve. The idea is that I've got Photons, I've got light current being generated, right? That's always going to be the same. Same amount of light coming in, same amount of photons coming in. But now the baseline has been raised a little bit. So now I've got a little bit of number of electrons that have enough energy to flow the other way. And this is called the diode current, ID. I diode. That's this guy. That's the internal diode effect in the solar cell. This is the internal diode. It's a PN junction. And so now I've got enough, I've got these little guys up here, I've got this amount right up here at the tip. There's enough to give me some that have enough energy to go the other way. And these are the two opposing currents that occur inside of a solar cell. And the net result that comes out is the photo generated current minus the diode current, right? The photo generated current minus the diode current is the net resulting PV current that comes out. Here's my voltage point. This would have been my photo generated current level. But because I'm losing a little bit, I actually go down a little bit. Did you see that? Now the trouble of drawing it here is that it's small. We normally draw these curves as being flat because we go, oh, the curve's flat, and then it drops off. Well, it's actually declining along the way, but only a little bit. But that circle went down because of this amount of the diode current that's starting to leak backwards. So now my next point on my curve, according to this voltage, is down a little bit. Let's keep going. Let's make the resistance bigger. Okay, so there's my line of bigger resistance. See, apply voltage. Now, instead of the current being up here, the current's there. Oh, I got more resistance. Same thing. Light comes in, knocks the electron loose, flows to the front, the, like the holes wander to the back. But now I've got more resistance. So I've got more building up of charge and more building up of holes. 
I've got no building up of electrons here. I've got a retention of more of the voltage that I started with at the end. These guys haven't lost it all. They're, they're like crowded. Think of a bunch of people crowded around a door, ready to go out. They've still got energy left to give. And so now that distance is shown up as more voltage that remains. And if I read up, it's going to hit my resistance curve right here. Remember, it's operating this curve. So it's got to be on the mutual curve of the IV curve and the resistance curve. So now the concept is I have that same photocurrent going forward, but now because I've raised up my baseline, I have more high energy electrons with enough energy to flow the other way. So my ID becomes bigger. My reverse current is becoming bigger. So now at this voltage point, instead of having this much current, I now drop it down that much because the loss there is that internal diode current going the other way. So now my current is a bit lower, even though my voltage is higher. Let's keep going one more step. Same idea, same idea, same idea. Much bigger resistor, light comes in, does the same idea. All the stuff is moving, moves to the front, moves to the back. And now I've got more piling up, right? Same concept. So now the difference that I'm building up between my voltages is even further out. So I've got even more voltage remaining that I can use. However, I still have the same amount of photo generated current going forward, but now I've got quite a bit more electrons with enough energy now that they can actually flow the other way up against that hill. So my diode current subtraction is greater. So what happens is my photo generated current, which is my potential possibility here, gets reduced by an even greater diode current there, and it drops down to that point. So you can see my shape, right? And now let's finish. Let's get to open circuit. How can we have open circuit? How can you have photons coming in and nothing coming out? How come the cell doesn't just blow up, right? What's going on? Well, what's going on with open circuit condition? Well, the load I'm connected to is an open load, right? There's no connection. That's my situation. So what's going to go on here? Light comes in, knocks my electrons loose, everything keeps moving. I separate my charges. And now what's happened? The electrons that were generated by the light have nowhere to go. I get a real buildup of electrons. So now I have a big gap between the voltage point where they started and the voltage where they're at right now, the voltage potential they have. I have my maximum voltage potential reading here. But let's think about the currents. I still have the same photo generated current because it's the same amount of light coming in. But now, because my threshold level has been raised so high, the amount of electrons with enough energy to flow backwards is equal to the photo current. So now the diode current is equal to the photo current. Basically what's happening is that there's a circulation of current within the cell. Lights coming in, knocking electrons loose, and they're just circulating. No, 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 no. It doesn't blow up, but nothing comes out. So the net current level, if these two are equal, the net current level is zero, right? The current flowing here is equal to the current flowing down the diode. And all the current is circulating here within the solar cell itself. So now, all that photo generated current that I started with here, the green, all that current is lost. And I'm at a point where I have voltage, I can measure voltage here, but I've got no net current flowing out. And that gives me my IV curve. That's how it's shaped like that. And the reason that it's not linear is because this distribution curve based on physics is not linear. It has to do with the quantum calculation of the number of states and all that kind of crazy stuff. So that's where the curve gets its shape.